With the New York Times in one hand and the Catechism of the Catholic Church in the other, Al Cresta is ready for conversations of consequence. We do not train to be merciful here. Mercy is for the weak. Pope Francis has declared the year of mercy. The message of divine mercy is the heart of the gospel. You said it very well. ISIS claims they have more terrorists in America. What you talking about, Willis? This is not a time to be afraid, though. If God be for us, who can be against us? Nobody! Broadcasting from the studios of Ave Maria Radio in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and taking a closer Catholic look at current events, issues, and ideas. This is Cresta in the Afternoon. What you do is so critically important. That's a great analysis. You nailed it. The force is strong in this week. It's showtime. Well, let's start the insanity. You have proved yourself worthy. Will you join me? Who's with me? Let's go! And a good afternoon. I'm Al Cresta, thanking you for joining me. We've got another hour talking about the things that matter most. Well, over the weekend, of course, two celebrated terrorist attacks now. Uh, one in Minnesota, in which uh, 10 people were wounded at the Crossroads Center Mall. And then, of course, in New York, where we had this uh, bombing with, I think it was 27 people injured. And uh, now the arrest of Ahmad Khan Rahami. He was taken into custody after the gunfight with police uh, yesterday in Linden, New Jersey. We now learn that uh, Rahami's father had told the FBI at one point that this, his son was a terrorist. And we also have people like Andrew Cuomo, governor of New York, going out of his way uh, to claim that originally his first instinct, his first instinct was to reassure everybody that this was not a terrorist attack. That on Sunday, he released a statement saying, we have, I, I wish I had the language right in front of me, but he actually said, we have ruled that out. We have ruled international terrorism out. Now, the reason I, I'm focusing in on this is because this is the governor of the state of New York. In other words, he has stewardship and governance over the state. So, And this took place on his watch in the state for which he has responsibility. And before he knew what the cause was, he actually said, we have ruled out international terrorism. Well, as it turns out, it may not be international but it certainly was terrorism. And he was obviously interested in keeping people calm. They are afraid that you have a hair-trigger temper, and when these acts of violence occur against your fellow citizens, that you are likely to jump up, find a, a hammer or a club, or worse, a gun, and you're going to go out and attack the first Pakistani, uh, Saudi, Somali that you see. Well, guess what? There is no long list of crimes against those minorities based on fear of terrorism in the United States. So what ends up happening is our civic officials give us the impression they're more concerned about calming the American public than they are about getting these terrorists. Now, I'm sure if you were to sit them down and try to talk sense with them, they'd realize that, uh, no, that is, they don't want to do that, really. I mean, they, they, they want to get the bad guys. Um, the way it comes across, everyone, here, look at this. I'm looking here at a uh, story from uh, uh, Minnesota. This is from uh, uh, Let's see. Yeah, St. Cloud, uh, local local paper. Somali community braces for St. Cloud St. Cloud Mall attack backlash. Have, have you? Do you see groups of citizens w running rampant in Somali neighborhoods, or Pakistani neighborhoods, or Saudi neighborhoods, or Indonesian neighborhoods? You know, looking for blood. It's, that's not happening. That isn't the threat. The threat isn't the American people. 
and it's insulting, condescending, patronizing to continue to hear these civic leaders talk as though the American people are a bunch of adolescents with hair trigger tempers that uh, you can't speak the truth to, so you got to sometimes mislead them in order to keep them satiated and satisfied and complacent and, uh, uh, you know, not thinking revolutionary thoughts. So we're going to spend time this hour talking with Robert Spencer of jihadwatch.org. But first, let's get to the headlines with Nick Tom.